If you're interested in starting a career in the tech or cloud space, this video is going to answer some of your biggest questions. From how to get started with no experience, how much jobs in tech get paid, to whether coding skills are required. Now, I've asked all of you to send me through some questions for this Q&A, and so this video will be tailored to address the most common concerns. Before we get into it, I wanted to mention that I partnered up with Triple Ten for this video, an online education bootcamp to help you transition into tech. They have a lot of useful articles that I'll be referencing, and I'll also share with you later how their programs could support your career goals. Alright, let's get started. Question number one. With so many people already pursuing certifications and projects, what does it actually take to land a job in the tech or cloud space in 2025? Okay, this is the question I get all the time, and it's true. You could be doing all the right things, but to really set yourself apart in this competitive field, here are three more things I'd recommend. First, focus on targeted applications. Instead of sending out as many resumes as possible, take time to research each company that you're interested in. Look at the specific initiatives and projects they work on and tailor your resume and cover letter to showcase any skills or projects that directly relate to those. For example, if you're applying to a cloud support engineer role at AWS, make sure your resume highlights skills like troubleshooting and debugging, not just your general cloud knowledge. In this specific scenario, you could also add a project where you simulated an application error and walk through the steps of debugging it using tools like Amazon CloudWatch. But regardless, don't worry if you don't come from a traditional tech background. According to this Triple Ten report surveying 1,000 decision makers in the US, it was found out that 79% of employers are keen to hire candidates for technical roles without any prejudice. That's 79%. My second piece of advice is to sharpen your interview skills because landing an interview is only half of the job. Practice answering common technical and behavioral questions for the role that you're targeting. You can use the STAR method, situation, task, action, result to structure your answers for behavioral questions and for the technical ones, be prepared to clearly explain your thought process. Mock interviews can be a great way to build confidence, especially if you can get feedback from someone with industry experience. And thirdly, make networking one of your biggest priorities. You can start small and attend local tech events in your area. Meetup.com is a great place to look for them. I also like this piece of advice from a Triple Ten article, which says, become a regular at the events and spaces where tech happens. It might sound simple or obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do this. The article also encourages graduates to use every last service offered by their college and to get active online, which I completely agree with because my entire university experience was pretty much immersing myself in tech and business societies and building up my presence on LinkedIn. All right, question number two, what certifications do I really need? Well, it depends on the area in tech you're looking to get into. If we're talking about cloud, I would highly recommend studying for a foundational certification like the AWS Cloud Practitioner or Azure Fundamentals. These cover core cloud concepts that are needed for entry-level cloud roles. But keep in mind that certifications alone don't guarantee a job. You'll need real technical skills that you can demonstrate in interviews. And if you're interested in software engineering, a certificate of completion from a relevant program will indicate the hard skills you've acquired, which will help you stand out. For example, Triple Ten has this software engineering bootcamp that's designed to take you from zero to job ready. If you haven't heard of Triple Ten before, they're a beginner-friendly online bootcamp that's specifically designed for people with no prior IT or STEM knowledge. For software engineering, they start off with the absolute basics like HTML and CSS so that you can build foundational knowledge. The curriculum is broken down into sprints and at the end of each sprint, you'll complete a project to apply what you've learned. Now, this leads us to question number three, which is do boot camps guarantee a job in tech? This is an interesting question because not all boot camps make that promise. However, some programs like Triple Ten are structured to improve your job prospects significantly. Triple Ten offers a get a job or get a refund guarantee, where if you don't land a tech role within six months after graduating, they will refund your tuition. It's also the only boot camp in the US that offers unlimited externship opportunities even after graduation. And here's how Triple Ten supports that guarantee. First, the 87% employment rate means that graduates secure jobs within six months of completing the program. Next, it's great for landing remote opportunities, with around 71% of graduates finding remote roles, giving them flexibility. And thirdly, Triple Ten offers ongoing career support. In fact, they have lifelong career assistants, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and success managers who will help you build job-ready skills and make industry connections. If all of this sounds interesting to you, I'd recommend signing up for a free career consultation from Triple Ten. Their career advisor helps you decide on the profession, tells you about their programs, and helps you find a convenient start. I'll leave a link to it in the video description below. And if you do decide to join, you can use my personal code Lucy for the biggest 30% discount on any Triple Ten programs. Okay, moving on to question number four. What should I include in my portfolio? 
portfolio. Now, building a strong portfolio is very important for many roles in tech. You might think that you need to design a fancy website to make it happen, but all you really need is a simple landing page or a GitHub repo. You can either create your own personal website to document your projects, write blogs on LinkedIn or Medium, or publish them onto LinkedIn. For more information on how you can do that, you can check out this video I have on documenting your cloud projects. But here's my advice. Don't just build generic projects. It can be a really good start to follow tutorials to build things out, but make sure you always customize it to make it more meaningful. For example, if you want to build a serverless web application on AWS, you could make a serverless cloud dictionary, a recipe book, or even a to-do list tracker for yourself, whichever one resonates the most with you. Because adding real world context to your portfolio of projects would really help you stand out. Now, Triple Ten also has a checklist that you can use to design your portfolio. And this is especially useful for coding projects that you build. You can see that you'll need to ask yourself questions like, does the project work? Is the project publicly accessible? And have you removed any unnecessary comments from your code? And by the way, Triple Ten Bootcamp graduates upon graduation would have already completed several real projects for their portfolio. This can help in employment and offers a more guided approach compared to self-study and figuring out which projects to build for yourself. Okay, question number five. How much can a beginner tech job pay? As many of you may know, salaries for beginner tech roles can vary widely, not just from country to country, but also depending on specific factors. Factors like the role, the industry, and the company size. In the US, for example, entry-level positions in tech can start at around 70k annually, but it's common to see much higher figures for more specialized roles or at large tech companies. For example, an associate solutions architect role at AWS has a starting total comp of about 130k. Other large companies also offer for competitive packages, especially in high demand areas like the cloud. If you're curious about specific salary ranges for different roles or companies, Glassdoor and Levels.FYI are good resources for getting accurate and up-to-date numbers. You can also see in this Triple Ten report that the median tech salary for their graduates is 76.6k and 87% of the grads get hired within the first 180 days. If we scroll down a bit, you'll also be able to see the median starting salaries of different program streams. The next question is, what are companies looking for in tech hires? Well, beyond the technical skills, companies want candidates with good communication skills, problem solving abilities, and a strong work ethic. With communication, this means being able to explain technical ideas clearly, especially when dealing with both technical and non-technical teams. Problem solving is all about approaching challenges strategically and efficiently troubleshooting issues. And demonstrating a strong work ethic means being willing to put in the hard work and dedication needed for the role. Triple Ten also knows in this article based on their survey that a personal pitch, a robust portfolio, and a polished CV are the best tools to help you stand out. So keep that in mind too. Moving on to question number seven, how much coding knowledge do I need to start learning cloud? Now, this is a very common question I get asked. To start learning cloud, you don't need any coding knowledge. What I mean by this is that you can pick it up as you go when learning about services that require coding. But in order to actually land an entry-level cloud role, I would recommend learning at least one coding language. Languages like Python and and Bash are a great starting point. This is because Python is widely used in cloud environments for scripting and automation, while Bash can help you manage tasks and operations in Linux-based environments. What I'll say though is that coding skills can definitely be developed over time as you grow in your cloud role. And as you gain more experience, you can choose to add more coding knowledge if that aligns with your career path. Question number eight is how do you avoid giving up the dream of landing a tech or cloud job? Now, this is a tough one, especially given how volatile how the tech market has been. But I'd say the key is to break it down into smaller, actionable steps. If applying for jobs feels too overwhelming at the moment, start by just focusing on one thing each week, like improving your resume or working on a specific project, maybe even practicing for interviews. Something that really helped me was to keep track of my progress. You can keep a log of every job you apply for, every skill you learn, and every new connection you make. Seeing the progress can keep you motivated, even when the actual results take time. Finally, surround yourself with a good support system. Join tech communities online, attend local meetups, or even find a study group for certifications. It's much easier to stay on track when you have people to share your journey with. And remember that every no you hear is just one step closer to that yes you're working toward. Okay, final question, how do I keep up with changes in tech? The best way to stay updated is by actively immersing yourself in the tech. As I mentioned earlier, you can join local meetup groups and attend events that might seem interesting to you. Next, experiment with the tools that you're curious about. For example, if you're 
interested in AWS, explore cloud services by building small projects that challenge you. This hands-on approach can help you learn much faster. And finally, to make it easy for you to stay updated, you can subscribe to my free weekly email newsletter called cloudbytes.ai. It's a place where I share the latest news and advice on cloud and AI. But overall, I would say that the more you engage with the tech space, the easier it would be to stay ahead. All right, this brings us to the end of this video. Once again, thank you Triple Ten for bringing a lot of useful information and insights for our community. And just as a reminder, if you want a structured path into a tech role, Triple Ten's bootcamp offers hands-on projects, career coaching, and lifelong assistance. They provide a free career consultation to help you figure out your next steps. And you can use my code Lucy for a 30% discount off any of their programs. Just click on the link in the description below or scan the QR code on the screen. Hopefully I was able to answer your top questions in this Q&A, but if you have any more, please let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Bye for now.